Ever felt like you've spent so much of your time leveling and gearing a main, only to find that it's not fun anymore and that you kinda wasted all your time? Hey guys, Gong Rong Zong here. So following up on our PvE guide series on the different classes in Battle for Azeroth, today we're going to explore the Frostpack of the Death Knight. Just as a reminder, this guide is about exploring the design philosophy behind the classes and their abilities, rather than the actual talents or numbers, as those will always be subject to change based on patch changes and number tweaking. Frost decays in Battle for Azeroth have largely the same talents as in Legion, just with a bit of shuffling around. In a nutshell, here are the basic pros and cons of the Frost DK spec going into PvE situations in Battle for Azeroth. Pros They have strong AoE capability, unique crowd control elements, and a reliable source of self-healing. But on the cons, they have pretty much non-existent mobility and moderate single or dual target DPS. Let's go through the first one, strong AoE capability. Frost Scythe is a talent that when chosen, and should almost always be prioritized over the other talents in the row in any mythic dungeon or scenario with lots of trash or adds, does a significant amount of AoE damage. This synergizes very well with Howling Blast, an ability that enables you to AoE all your surrounding targets with a Frost Damage Dot, known as Frost Fever. The combination of this spammable Frost Scythe ability, and also which just looks plain awesome by the way, and its consistent triggering of the Howling Blast ability allows the Frost DK to do consistent AoE damage for extended periods of time. At no point of the AoE rotation does the gameplay feel sluggish or unengaging. Frost DKs, like every other DK spec, possess a unique crowd control effect, that of Death Grip. It is the only ability in-game that allows a player to grab an enemy and pull it towards him or her. This can be invaluable in both dungeons and raid scenarios whereby you are required to pull a critical mob towards your group to kill or perhaps to pull it away from somewhere that it's not supposed to go. This can potentially create a niche yet valuable spot for a Frost DK as a DPS, as it can be seen for example in the Agrama boss fight in Legion, whereby using Death Grip on the fire elementals makes the fight a thousand times easier. Frost DKs also have a reliable way to heal when leveling or playing solo, in the form of their Death Strike ability and Dark Sucker passive. Combined together, it allows the Frost DK to stay at near full HP while killing mobs out in the field. Nevertheless, even without Dark Sucker triggering, Death Strike coupled with Permafrost, a talent that shields you based off your auto attack damage, are viable options that will allow you to heal or mitigate some damage off yourself in the event that your healer is in trouble, without interrupting your DPS rotation in any way. Let's move on to the cons. The biggest con by far, and I'm sure some of you already know this, is their limited mobility. In Battle for Azeroth, the Death Knight's only form of increased mobility comes in the form of an ability known as Death's Advance. This ability, however, only increases your movement speed by a mere 30% for 8 seconds. There is an additional talent that you could choose, Wraith Walk, that increases your movement speed by 70% for 4 seconds. However, when compared to other talents on the same tier, it is questionable whether this talent should be chosen for PvE purposes. So by and large, if you choose to play as a Frost DK, you will be running around pretty slowly as compared to the other classes. Lastly, on the flip side of very well designed AoE capability comes moderate single target or dual target potential. While Frost DKs do possess the skills to take part in single target combat, the class just doesn't seem to be designed around it. Most of their synergy comes from triggering their abilities on multiple targets, allowing them to gain runes and runic power even faster to trigger even more abilities. When applied to only one or two targets, the gameplay of the Frost DK slows down significantly, affecting both potential DPS output and its level of engagement. 
Now let's see how the gameplay of Frost Decays look like in Battle for Azeroth. Frost Decays rely on two types of resources to generate damage, Frost Runes and Runic Power. Frost Runes regenerate automatically on a set timer, with certain skills and talents designed around boosting their rate of regeneration. Thus, your entire rotation revolves around utilizing your runes and runic power in an order that optimizes your damage. Now while that may sound complicated on paper, in practice the Frost DK is actually one of the simplest classes or specs to play. The rotation is incredibly easy to pick up, and there are only a few buttons you have to press in order to dish out the damage. It basically goes like this. Cast Obliterate for single target or Frost Scythe for AoE when you have spare runes. Cast Frost Strike or Glacial Advance if you chose that talent with runic power. Cast Howling Blast immediately when it procs or when the ability lights up. And cast Remorseless Winter when it's off cooldown for AoE situations. And that's about it, your basic core rotation. There is no need to track your damage over time abilities or dots, even though there is a dot known as Frost Fever, as your Howling Blast, the ability that triggers Frost Fever, will proc more than often enough to constantly refresh the dot on all of your targets. There is also little to no setup or ramp up time required for this spec. Once you see an enemy, you can charge right in to engage it. Its big cooldowns, Pillar of Frost and Empower Rune Weapon are simple and easy to use. They are fire and forget cooldowns, meaning that they do not change your rotation or prioritization of abilities in any significant way. The only potential consideration would be to use these cooldowns when you have as many runes as possible, that is 6 runes, in order to maximize damage during their duration. In the same vein, it is also not very punishing if you mess up the rotation. It is easy to recover from any potential mistakes, easy to maintain your dots on multiple targets, and easy to pick up a fight where it had been left off if you had to run away due to a mechanic. In many ways, the Frost DK feels a little like a Fury Warrior if you've ever tried that spec before. They both dual wield melee weapons, are dressed in plate, and are designed to be fast paced in their gameplay. However, as mentioned about the single target gameplay of the Frost DK, there will be some moments that become slow or clunky due to being rune and runic power starved, and due to it having far less abilities to use for single target. This could be solved with additional haste gear, but currently it still seems to be that single target gameplay design for Frost DK DPS is a secondary consideration. At the end of the day, if you would like to play something that is simple to pick up and also simple to master, that has a very fast paced and engaging AoE gameplay with lots of small numbers constantly popping up on your screen, and just look pretty dang badass cutting through swathes of mobs with a huge IC scythe, then the Frost DK might just be something you want to consider trying out. And that's a wrap! I hope I've been able to provide some insight into how this class and spec works on a basic level. At the end of the day, just give the class a try yourself to see if you might like it. If you've any thoughts at all, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. A huge huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting me thus far, and as always, I'll see you in Azeroth.